Compton effect. Compton do an experiment which is to prove that light really can behave like a particle. In his experiment, he used the X-ray and shoot the X-ray to one electron. And he want to know what is the outcome of this experiment. We already know that classical theory treat X-ray as a wave. Okay, so now we want to know how classical theory look explain the Compton experiment. Okay, since in classical theory X-ray is treated as a wave, so we draw this kind of figure for X-ray, which is as a wave form with frequency f and wavelength lambda, and this X-ray will be shot on electron. However, in the classical theory, this X-ray will just pass through the electron like this. And finally, after it passes through, the frequency and wavelength are still the same as the initial one. And also, we cannot observe any change occurs on electron. So this is how classical theory explain about the Compton experiment, which is there is no change occur to both electron and X-ray. However, the actual experimental result look like this. When X-ray with frequency f and lambda shoot the electron, what happened? The X-ray will be secreted to some direction and electron will be recalled in another direction. So that means there is, they, they has an interaction between X-ray and electron. The another observation is the frequency and wavelength of X-ray is changed, which is from F to F prime, and from lambda to lambda prime. Okay, where we see that when when he measured the frequency and wavelength of the scattered X-ray, he found that lambda prime is greater than lambda, and F prime is less than F, which means frequency final is less than the frequency initial. We know that energy is equal to HF, which is the energy of photon is equal to HF. Since in this situation, the final frequency is less than the initial frequency. So then we can say that the energy of the X-ray is reduced. Okay, and due to the conservation of energy, the redu reduction of energy may be converted to electron, which is X-ray gives some of its energy to electron, so that electron can recall to another direction. This theta is called scattered angle, which is the angle between the initial direction of X-ray with the scattered X-ray. So, from this experiment, Compton are able to conclude that X-ray are really behave like a particle, which means we see from this experiment that the collision between X-ray and electron are equivalent to the collision between two billiard balls. So we can say that X-ray really can behave like a particle. And from this experiment, Compton apply the conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. And he able to show that the scattered wavelength, which is the final wavelength of X-ray, are highly depend on the scattered angle. So it depend on what direction the, the X-ray is scattered, and that's determine what is lambda prime. Okay, so now you want to see how Compton apply the conservation of energy and momentum. Okay. The X-ray will shoot the electron. The initially, X-ray has momentum, momentum P and energy E equal to HF. Initially, electron is not moving, but due to the relativity, it has the rest mass energy equal to MEC squared. Okay. The scattered X-ray will have momentum P prime and energy E prime equal to HF prime. The recoil electron will have energy E E and P E. Okay, so if he apply the conservation of energy, which is energy before equal to energy after, he will get something like this. E plus M E 
c squared, which is energy before, is equal to e e plus e prime, which is energy after. And also we can replace e with h f and e prime with h f prime. For the conservation of momentum, the momentum here is actually in form of vector. So actually, momentum P is equal to P E plus P prime, which is we can see here. If we draw the vector addition diagram, we will look, the, the vector addition diagram will look like this, which is, this is P, we draw here. This is P prime, we draw it here. And this is P E, we draw it here. And Compton do use the consign rule in order to take rid of the vector so that he will deal with just the magnitude of the vector, just a value of the momentum. So if he use the cosine rule and apply it on PE, he will get something like this. PE squared equal to P squared plus P prime squared minus 2P, P prime cos theta. So this we label as equation 2 and this we label as equation 1. So by using this equation, he further his derivation and get this kind of equation, which is from this equation, we can see that the scattered wave length is depend on the scattered angle. So it depends where the x-ray are scattered. Okay, the direction of the scattered x-ray will determine what is the value of the final wavelength. So thank you for watching. Bye bye.